Hello, hello again, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Weather Center Nazario, and happy hump day. Yes, it is already Wednesday, October 4th, 2023. I can't believe just how fast time is going by. The hurricane season to its entirety almost has pretty much come and gone. We're in the back end of it now. We're moving through October. October is going to be gone before you know it. Halloween will be upon us soon enough. I have a lot of good information to pass along to you guys today, so let's jump right in. We're looking at our half-disc water vapor shot because there's a number of entities I want to show you on here and kind of talk about about the dynamics in play. First and foremost, Tropical Storm Philippe, still a very scattered mess on satellite imagery. You can see that there's an abundance of moisture associated with this feature, and as such, we had a pop-off area of convection form up right over top our British and U.S. Virgin Islands yesterday evening. It was right before my bedtime. I came home from a hockey game, and I saw in the infrared just a massive convective complex popping off on satellite, and unfortunately, it was parked over that general area for between 8 to 10 hours, so I would anticipate they saw wide widespread flooding, frequent cloud-to-ground lightning, as well as high winds as those storms continue to train overhead. This is in part due to the shear that's been impacting Tropical Storm Philippe, those abundant outflow boundaries I've been talking about for the last couple of segments, as well as all that residual energy that's essentially draped across the Caribbean. You can see it on the satellite image where you have tons of moisture out there all together. Now, where is Philippe going? Let's talk about those dynamics a little bit. We have a ridge over the northeast right now. You can see it in the water vapor imagery running across Across that area like so into another trough axis moving off to the east. Now what's happening here and the reason I have our water vapor shot up right now is you can see here is that breakaway jet flow that we've also been discussing for the last couple of iterations of Weather Center. You can see that upper level spin. This is not evident on visible satellite or infrared. You have to look very closely and water vapor is an outstanding tool to identify those mid to upper level circulations. What's going to happen here is despite Philippe trying to move off to the east and eventually the northeast like we were previously anticipating last week, this breakaway area of jet activity, this little embedded trough amongst the split flow you see going on across central CONUS, that is an analyst nightmare right there. You can see a channel of jet energy moving up across the central upper Midwest into the upper Great Lakes, feeding our mature system moving through Ontario, headed towards the Hudson and James Bay area. And then we have extra jet energy outlining a subtropical ridge over the Gulf in Central America right now. So that's exactly where this little bad boy originated from. We had that frontal system come through, cool things off across the eastern seaboard, bring down some of that Canadian smoke, and now we have that breakaway upper low that's going to try to entrain or catch Philippe as he tries to make an escape route into the central Atlantic. As a result, he's going to head straight for the Bermuda Island. What I anticipate is going to happen, and I'll use two different colors here, this low is going to eventually deepen and start to move off to the east-northeast like so, trying to catch back up with the main flow of the jet stream at two, 300 millibars. While Philippe tries to head off to the north and eventually try try to retrograde out to sea with this system propagating in from the west it's going to wrap him up and try to give him that little bit of a spin back towards the northeastern coastline i do apologize for my ragged almost seismometer looking drawing right there but you guys get the picture very interesting phenomena that's going on right now once philippe can begin to move a little bit further to the north he's about situated right in through this general area here it's still a very disorganized system as he moves further to the north he's going to get into area with a more favorable environment he's going to deepen down just a little bit more and and once he becomes entrained with that upper low, believe it or not, the wind field around both systems, once that upper low can begin to form a surface reflection, basically the upper levels translate down to the low levels, that pressure gradient, just like we saw with Tropical Storm Ophelia and Hurricane Lee earlier in the season, is going to be the reason we see an increase in overall wind speeds as well as precipitation with this storm as it moves towards Bermuda. So Bermuda, start looking at this thing, start making your preparations for now, because I do anticipate we're going to see an elevated wind threat for an extended period of time as both of these entities start to wrap their way up to the north. Eventually what's going to happen is once we see landfall or an impact somewhere along the northeast coast in the eastern periphery of Canada, it's going to be entrenched within this upcoming massive monster low over the James Bay, Ontario area. That's going to be our main feature really associated with the polar front jet that's finally going to wrap both of those little lows up and suck them dry for all intents and purposes. Now we are watching a couple other separate features. We're waiting to see exactly what's going to happen right in through here. We have a lot of tropical moisture just off the Central American coastline. We have Lydia out there who is anticipated, and I'm using air quotes, to go out to sea posing no harm or foul to anybody, but if you look way out here, you can kind of get an idea of where our jet is and how it's trying to dig a trough axis down further to the south over the next few days that could steer her back towards Baja, California into Mexico, as well as what NHC is predicting could start to generate over here off the Central American coastline, right about where I begin to draw my line. It's 
also anticipated to track off to the west-northwest and could get pushed into the Bay of Campeche. Last but certainly not least, we can't leave this out. We have a little bit of a tropical wave working its way through the pattern that's going to arrive in our windward island sometime during the day tomorrow that's going to increase your rain threat and the potential localized flood threat as well after what we just had go on with Tropical Storm Philippe. And it looks like the MDR may not be out of gas to its entirety just yet because a lot of our models are indicating cyclogenesis once again for one last Cabo Verde system working its way off the African coast. I'm watching that carefully because I'm still seeing a little bit of wiggling and wobbling going on with the Canadian and the GFS predicting it might want to come close to our Lesser Antilles after already being impacted by Tropical Storm Philippe. And I'm watching this very closely despite the erroneous spread, if you will, in our model data. Some want to take it sharply to the north. Others want to bring it into the Caribbean. I know that there's a huge discrepancy in that, but my main concern here is to make sure that folks who have already been under the influence of very active weather are protected because if another system deepens down and forms stronger and more organized than Philippe has been, we could have a problem. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, we are moving right along. We're all very familiar with this chart. Yes, CPC has come out with their October iteration of what the tropical and overall environment could look like across the globe. And what we're going to do is fixate on these giant blobs of red. Because what's very interesting to note on this ensemble here, and when I say ensemble, I don't mean model. I just use that as the general adjective. What we look and see is we have an area of above 20% chance of development across the Western and Southern Caribbean and that Bay of Campeche, the Southern Gulf. And then one thing I was ecstatic to see yesterday is the fact that CPC is going 40% and above as we get deeper into the interior parts of October between 18th to the 24th. Now, take that with a grain of salt. Don't margin yourself to those specific time frames. What's happening is because this is a paper or a black and white chart, you're not seeing that transition. So we could start to see those greater chances of development creep in before we get into that October 18th time frame. What they're highlighting here is how the MJO, the Madden-Julian Oscillation, albeit fairly weak, is making a eastward propagation across the Pacific. What that means basically is, and I'll draw it for you guys right here, we have the MJO parked somewhere over the central Pacific, moving off to the east. That's why we're starting to see conditions ignite in the very eastern Pacific. Once it can finally situate itself right about here, which is what we saw back in August when Adalia kind of kicked out of Central America. That's when they're really anticipating overall low pressure across Central America, lots of good thunderstorm activity, and they're highlighting a very good chance we could see another spin-up of an entity out there slingshot into the Gulf, into the Caribbean, Lord willing, away from any major landmass, but right now the trends indicate a Gulf Coast, especially Florida impact. All right, so as I was saying, this is our first batch of ensembles, the real ensembles we're going to look at, and this is for 12Z GFS, and you can see when we take a look out over the Gulf right now there's just a tremendous amount of agreement that something out there is going to happen we have a tremendous amount of low pressure areas that are highlighted by the GFS ensembles and our activity out in the main development region and you can see that split there some want to track it right towards the lesser Antilles and develop it others want to just spin it out to see there's a huge area of discrepancy and discontinuity out there so it just bears monitoring the fact that we have some ensembles trying to put it into an area already impacted by bad weather that's why I'm talking about it but you can see even if I freeze on this panel at 306 hours out quite a ways away look at what we have over top central florida and that's the main reason why we've been hammering home on weather center we have to watch central america the caribbean and the gulf there's been a tremendous and i'm going to use tremendous again with a capital t in fact capitalize the whole word there's been a tremendous amount of agreement across the board all of our models are saying something's coming out of there whether it be just organized bad weather or if it actually be a tropical storm or a very low grade disorganized hurricane I've actually been doing a lot of homework in the background. I've seen both Tropical Storm Carl and, believe it or not, Hurricane Carl back in 2010 take shape in the Bay of Campeche, just like all of our models are indicating could happen now. It's been very fruitful information that I've been digesting for you guys to help tailor what it is I talk about in these video segments and kind of educate you guys on the history of why we see things form where they form and where they tend to go. We also had a Tropical Storm Cristobal who formed back there as well. Same situation. The gyre kicked off. We had something in the 
Northeast Pack, wander over Central America, and then form up in that same general area. So as we go in between segments, you can guarantee I'm researching this critically so that way I can continue to try to modify what it is the models are doing, what my brain is doing to communicate it the best I can to you guys. Here we are in the 0Z Euro Ensembles. Yes, I know. I apologize, guys. I never wait for 12Z just because I want to make sure I have this out for you guys and readily available to watch. You can see that the agreement for something forming up in the Gulf has not decreased whatsoever on the Euro. In fact, we're starting to get a little more sporty in the Caribbean as well. Euro has suddenly in the last 18, 24 hours identified that there could be a weak perturbation somewhere sneaking into the Caribbean that might try to develop. 12Z GFS also highlighted this if you guys are watching the Caribbean closely. There are some ensembles suddenly starting to pick up a little bit of momentum and try to develop something. And then out in the MDR, you can see indications of a tropical storm trying to form, albeit the Euro kind of predicts it's going to weaken as soon as it tries to push off to the west. And if it does stay organized, it's going straight up out to sea a la a Hurricane Margo, if you guys remember her. So now this is something I've been obsessing over all afternoon because if you look at our preset models, if you look at our mean sea level pressure models, you would think, at least based on the signatures that you're seeing, that whatever decides to form in the Gulf is almost looking a little more jet support, a little more just general garden variety, low pressure with fronts attached to it. But then I looked above. I looked above the surface because as a meteorologist, we all have to remember... A model or two is only one small piece of the puzzle. It's about like one in 50 out of everything else you need to look at and interpret. And when I went above the upper levels of the atmosphere, or I should say when I went into the upper levels, I was a little astonished to see what I saw. Despite the surface reflection, it's all tropical. We have, you can see at this point in the model, I'm going to pause it right here. You can see we have a very good anti-cyclone situated over the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico. On the left-hand side, we have GFS. On the right-hand side, we have our Canadian model because both of those models are and they go out this far, unlike the German model, the Icon, unfortunately. That's why it's not here. And you can see that the main area of jet energy is still off to the north. So believe it or not, whatever decides to take shape in the Bay of Campeche, despite how the precip models and our mean sea level pressure models want to depict it very broad, almost weak, it actually will be tropical in nature. Maybe just spread out due to increased wind shear or more subtropical in nature because we did have that frontal energy work its way through the Gulf. So very interesting, very particular here. I want to see how this evolves over the next few days. What the grand takeaway, guys, is we have something. There's something out there, and the developmental chances have not decreased since we started talking about this. I'm almost losing track of time. We've been so focused on Philippe. I've been hammering this home on my channel for what feels like forever at this point. Now we're coming over to the Euro real quick because as of yesterday, I have 12Z starting to populate. We're almost there. I'll try to take you through the run. And even at 12 Zulu, you can see that there is a low pressure center starting to form in that general area. At 0Z, it was a little more evident. We'll go back in time real quick for you guys. Once it populates, we'll go to the tail end of the run. And you can see that there is a low that does spin up and try to propagate towards the Yucatan Peninsula. And I'm going to show you the KMA after this because they are actually a mirror image of one another. Great model to model consistency. So the Euro is finally anticipating development and when we switch over to the KMA model I'll show you surface winds first and as you can see once we begin the loop you see that frontal system sink down that's all that green blobbish coloring going on right there we begin to see that tropical entity out in the eastern Pacific wander its way up through the Central American area southern Mexico and as a result you begin to see that low pressure form up right off the coast of the Yucatan Peninsula very reminiscent of what the euro is calling for right at around the same time albeit the euro does not go as far out as the Korean model does, and this is a new run 12 hours ahead of what the Euro is predicting, and if you track it through time, here we go, run-to-run -run consistency has been immaculate with this model. A lot of folks out there shame the Korean model, but I think it has been one of our best models, at least for this particular situation, in terms of its run-to-run -run consistency. It hasn't changed. I've been watching this every single day for at least a week now, and it has not changed. It's been very, very insistent that whatever is coming, it's going to form in that same general area and track in the same general direction. As you go towards the end of the loop, you can see it consolidate and then march its way right into central Florida in between the Tampa St. Pete area and the Fort Myers area, unfortunately having been hit by, you already know, I'm not even going to say the names. And for those of you out there who mentioned this is looking a little on the weak saw side, we're going to go to mean sea level pressure from the Korean model as well since it has been so well in terms of its consistency. As you go through time and you see that thing start to form up, we go below 1,000 millibars all the way down to 991 upon what looks to be a Fort Myers 
requires landfall. So for those of you discounting not only the Korean model, but this overall system's potential intensity or potential energy, I'll say, we could have a pretty high-end tropical storm working its way into the southern peninsula of Florida, and this has been trending for quite some time now. That's why I'm not taking my eyes off of it. And very interesting that the KMA has been one of our more consistent models. Last but certainly not least, guys, before we wrap up Wednesday's segment of Weather Center Nazario, I just want to show you why it is we have to pay close attention to the Caribbean, especially with what's left over of our Atlantic energy making its way in through the Lesser Antilles and into the Central Caribbean. We have a lot of shear up there around the Gulf Coast into the Gulf of Mexico, but the Caribbean looks a lot more favorable. We have really good ocean heat content and hot water. We've been talking about that all year, beating a dead horse at this point. And if you go through this European model run, you can see we have pretty good wind shear. I should say favorable wind shear across the entire Caribbean, pretty much. We have a little bit of a breakaway tut try to form its way up, but the European model is anticipating for it to weaken. And then at the end of the loop, you see a really potent anti-cyclone go gung-ho over Central America, which is what the Euro model is indicating could try to spit something out of there. I know a lot of you think I'm pointing at upper level winds, but what these little blobs right here are potential low level entities spitting up some outflow all the way up to the 200 millibar level. That's what this model is showing you. You can see the wind, the streamlines spreading apart as those work their way towards Florida. So again, guys, it goes without saying, we just have a lot to watch out for. It doesn't seem like the environment's going to calm down just yet. And with what we've looked at in terms of our potential vorticity, long range and large scale, it seems like our environmental conditions will continue to try to induce some storms. We're going to go ahead and call it quits here, guys. Thank you for joining me on this wonderful Wednesday afternoon. I hope the first half of the week has been great, and I'm wishing you all the best as we approach the first weekend of October. It's going to be a very interesting one to see what happens as those systems manifest in the East Pack and whatever happens in the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean for that matter. If I see any pressing updates with model data that comes out as soon as I finish recording this video, you best believe I'm going to punch it out to you guys so you get that information first. We'll see you tonight for our 8 p.m. Tropics Talk Wednesday Night Live. I look forward to seeing you all in there. We always have a great time talk tropics. Have some good old casual conversation. Please come in, join in. You're welcome to come in at any time. I'm really excited to have you have a conversation and I will make sure to respond so it doesn't seem like you're left out. I can promise you that. Thank you all for tuning in. Until next time, we'll see you tomorrow. This is Weather Center Nazario, signing out.